Hi everyone. Today we will review chapter 10, initial client consultations. We will review the purpose of a consultation and your role as a health profession or professional. So an introduction to the client consultation, we are focused on establishing a precedence for the type of working relationship that will ensue, meaning that it's the health professional's job to facilitate um, a strong foundation with trust, respect, and mutually rewarding experience for both the client and the health professional. Aspects of successful client relations. The personal training profession is centered on a strong relationship between the client and the health professional. So with this, dynamics vary from client to client because every person is, an, is their own individual. Their needs might be different, their goals might be different, um, their experiences in, with exercise might be different. But with this, there are behaviors that the health professional should exhibit as a foundation for their overall business development. Thinking long term, the goal of the personal trainer is to continue to attract clients and to retain long lasting client relationships. So we have to keep things in mind in order to be successful. Customer service and hospitality are some main components of uh, successful training. With this, communication with the client prior to meeting is going to be important and you might call them or um, email them, give them a text about 24 to 48 hours just as a reminder uh, and allow them to know that you look forward to seeing them soon. With this, being early for appointments is going to be important. Um, that way you can prepare for the sessions and when they come in, you are ready to work with them. Third, 100% preparedness for all appointments is key in building rapport with your clients and taking care of them. Uh, respond in a timely manner and with that, your communication with your clients should be respectful and courteous. Demonstrate organization, reliability, and always follow up on what's been promised. If you told your client you were going to follow up with some research based on a question that they had or an injury or something that they were dealing with, follow through. If you are scheduling a client, be there, be on time. If you've told them you are gonna be somewhere, go. Provide fitness training programs that are based on science or credible resources. So these aren't things that we see in magazines. It's not anything that we find on the latest cool website or social media platform. Um, but the programs that you create for your clients should be backed up by science um, or credible references. More on customer service and hospitality. Answer your client's questions in a clear and accurate way within this, your scope of practice. So as a personal trainer, there are, there's a line between what you can say and can recommend versus what you cannot because it's outside of your certification license. Um, so it's important to be aware of what you can and cannot do within your scope of practice and follow the guidelines. Refer your client to appropriate professionals when the issue is outside of your scope of practice. So that might be referring them to a massage therapist, maybe a chiropractor. It could be referring them to a registered dietitian um, or maybe a counselor if they're having uh, mental wellness concerns. Listen to their concerns by watching, by being actively in tune with what they're telling you. Respond with sincerity and solicit feedback. So ask them, how was your session today? How are you currently feeling with our plan? Um, and take that into consideration whenever you move forward with their exercise plan. Speak respectfully to the clients and of others. And also dress appropriately and professionally. So we wanna to come to work hygienic. We wanna to come to work 
um, prepared and alert and planned out. We know exactly what we're doing and we're wearing our staff uniform. With this, by providing customer service and hospitality, the experience will uh, promote optimistic warmth and it'll show that you are intelligent. It'll show that you have a high work ethic. It'll show that you feel empathy towards others and their needs. And it'll also help you develop self-awareness and integrity. Some examples of hospitality. When the client shows up, greet them with a handshake. Give them an th authentic smile. Show eye contact. Convey that the client's best interest is in mind under any circumstances. So the movements that you are providing for the client uh, are not working out. Maybe the client's movement is not, uh, the performance is not going well you might change things up in order for them to move safely and perform better. So their best interest needs to be um, in mind. Let's say that they come to the session and they haven't had much sleep at all because they've been studying overnight for an exam. Well, that high intensity workout that you might have programmed should be lowered to a lower intensity in order to keep their best interest in mind. Okay, so address client requests and do anything possible to make that, that stuff happen. These workout plans are for the clients. Nonverbal communication is something that we learn as we develop as professionals in any field. And we want to watch for nonverbal cues because they are believed to be more reliable and essential to understanding another person than just listening to speech. So things to look for are body language, such as posture, eye contact, facial expressions also speak volumes about an individual's thoughts and emotional state. The health professional must be aware that his or her nonverbal communication is being equally observed. So looking for signs and listening for signs to change up the programming or the session is going to be important. How can we improve nonverbal skills? Well, we can focus on our own appearance and our physique. So if we maintain good hygiene, along with we are staying healthy and fit, people are going to take us more seriously and our nonverbal communication skills will be enhanced. So colors of clothing are also influential and here's a list of specific messages that some colors can convey. Improving eye contact. The more frequent the eye contact, the better, but staring for more than a few seconds at a time might make an uncomfortable experience for the client. Also frequent blinking might show a wandering mind or one that wants to interrupt. So we want to make eye contact, just be careful about how much. Facial expressions, we wanna smile often as though we're interested in what's going on. If the client is talking to us, let's smile, let's nod our head like we're focused and we are in tune. Widening the eyes, raise the eyebrows, it's going to express interest. Narrowing the eyes or lowering them might indicate sadness, anger, or disgust. In addition to nodding yes to showing interest, keep your chin up, okay? Gestures, be expressive with your hands and body movements without exaggeration. So if you're a hand user, yes, use them, but you don't have to do it a lot. Postures, sit and stand with a vertical torso. Lean forward to show interest. Leaning back is perceived as informal. Keep your legs and arms uncrossed. Okay, this shows that you are welcome and you're secure. I'm moving on to a client-centered approach to coaching. 
So counseling skills of rapport building, exhibiting empathy, and active listening are key to keeping the client's perspective at the forefront. This approach does not encourage giving unsolicited advice. So if the client has not asked you for something, there's no need to dive into giving them extra recommendations or advice. Keep the focus on what the client needs. A summary of client-centered techniques on box 10.2. Keep your questions simple, okay? Keep them open-ended. So instead of yes or no responses, try to get some information out of your clients. Listen and encourage with verbal and nonverbal prompts. Clarify what they've said and then summarize it so that you can check your understanding as to what the client said and see if they understood what you said. Lastly, use respect, reflective listening. This is going to involve making statements that aim to bridge the gap between what they're telling you and the meaning behind their actual statement. Showing empathy it means listening and expressing understanding. You may not agree to what the client is telling you. You may have never gone through a situation that the client sh talks to you about, but you're at least listening to them and showing them that you care. So repeat what was said and clarify what was said in a form of a question. So an example would be, so I can better understand you. Fear of injuries has kept you from engaging in a regular routine, correct? And from there, it's going to allow the client to speak up more and further describe what she means by her comment. Active listening is an approach where you are attempting to understand the underlying meaning of what a client is telling you. Okay, so we have three different areas. A reflective statement would be, it sounds like you are hesitant to exercise regularly at this time. Empathetic statement would be many people are hesitant to exercise after an injury. That's showing that you understand it, that they're not the only one going through it, but you feel them, you get it. An open-ended question to get more info would be, can you tell me about your specific concerns? As you prepare for your client consultation, there are several things that you will do before. So first you're going to remind your client of the day and time of the next meeting and the time allotted for the appointment. For example, we're going to meet next Wednesday on October 1st at four o'clock PM and the session will last 30 minutes. You might put those times on your client's calendar so that you both have the session scheduled. Articulate what the next meeting will include. Recommended attire, necessary equipment, and if water is going to be needed. Also remind the client to complete any necessary forms and return them. The consultation location and confidentiality are things to consider. The assessment areas and consultation should be in a private room where verbal communication is not clearly discernible to other people or clients. So it should have some privacy. It shouldn't be distracting with background noise or music. There shouldn't be any visual distractions that might hinder the focus of the conversation. As you review and prepare for the client consultation, you will also get to the point where you're actually meeting the client. So when they arrive, you're going to warmly welcome them upon first sight, give them a handshake, engage in light conversation to put the client at ease. So how is your day? If you uh, work in the same area, how is it going over at work? Um, anything just to put them at ease and get them comfortable. Next, lead the client to the consultation area and review what's to come. So give them expectations and what the consultation will look like. 
review the structure of the appointment with this the client now knows what's coming and they will have a lower amount of anxiety present an opportunity for any client concerns to be addressed so before you even get started with the actual assessment you can ask them if they have any questions or any concerns before you move on Detailed consultation components. These include the personal trainer and client agreement. This might be how many sessions they signed up for. Um, they have to fill out a medical history form if they have certain risk factors and or the physical activity readiness questionnaire. They'll also most likely fill out an informed consent waiver that's provided by the organization that you work for. There will include, be included client goals, a health and fitness assessment, and a results and action plan. So after you complete a client consultation, all the paperwork has been reviewed, you've set goals with the client, you're going to confirm your next appointment. And at this time, you can book the client session, the next session in the calendar so everybody is on the same page and all the sessions are on the schedule. At the same time, the health professional should be thankful and show their thankfulness to the client for their time, maybe their efforts displayed during the consultation assessments, and show eagerness for the next visit. I really look forward to seeing you next time and getting started with your program. And that is chapter 10.